that you're here to come worship Jesus Christ with us today. Let's stand and start this service with an old hymn, I'm Redeemed.
announcements. We have our men's fellowship breakfast that will be taking place. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Be sure to sign up so Brother Chris will have many. And also, I, all our visitors, we welcome you today to River Life Church. Just make yourself at home as we worship Jesus Christ together. Give them a hand. Well, one of our own is here today, and uh, Brother Zach Rankin is here from the military. He is in the Air Force now, and Zach, we love you. Thank you for your service, for your company, and your country, I mean, and, and your family, and your church family, and we love you. And I saw a picture poster. The guy called you the winged man. Tell him you're the top one. He's your wing man when you see him again. But I'm so proud of Zach uh, and what he's doing, serving our country. And we love you, son. Appreciate you very much. Amen. Are you ready to worship? Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, let's worship Jesus today.
seems there's so much we have lost. As we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked, and one by one the enemy has whispered lies and led them off that
may be seated this morning. We are going to be doing a special this morning, so worship with us.
It's called expository preaching. When you just take a verse and tear it all to pieces. Sometimes we need to we read the Bible, but we do not read the Bible. Just because you say, well, I read my Bible every day, but do you comprehend what you're reading? And uh, Sister Lisa and myself, we've been on the subject, and uh, and uh, it, it has grown. We, she has 9,000 questions. <laughs> and I only have... 8,999 answers. <laughs> so there's always that one that you've got to keep prodding and keep going a little bit farther. And uh, now next week will be our Christmas message in time and then the following Sunday I'm going to finish this chapter. There's no way I'm finished this chapter today. Not unless you want to stay here till about 8 o'clock. <laughs> or some of y'all going, oh bummer. No, I'll, I'll finish it. Like, if you have your Bibles, turn to Colossians chapter 3. Now I'm going to go and get comfortable because uh, I want to tell you a lot of information today that I hope and pray helps you. If there's ever a time the church needs God, it's now. I don't know about you, but I need Him every day. Decisions that have to be made and actions throughout the day. We need the leading of the Holy Ghost in our lives. The promise that Jesus said, when He comes, He'll lead and guide you into all truth. Right? Well, three of you read that before the rest of you hadn't apparently, but He said He will lead and guide you into all truth. Talking about the Holy Spirit when He comes. We need the leading of the Holy Spirit more than we've ever needed in our life right now. And uh, I got where I don't want to watch the news because I know it's not right. Amen. Let's face it. <laughs> but nothing surprises me. Why? Because of this. It's already told me what's going to happen. Uh -huh. And so now we're beginning to live some of this. But now, the, i, I got to lay you a little ground before we get into chapter 3 because it starts out if then. <laughs> Uh, for two chapters he's talking to the church at Colossia and, and, and he's talking about them if you're so bold you say this and, and your actions are like this so he, he's beginning to put everything together and he said so if then you're claiming you are you're telling everybody that you are all of that in a box of pudding? <laughs> You're making your boast. So if you what you say you are, then he said, if then, I got some things to tell you. And so listen as we I just want to read the first four verses today. I don't think we've got time to go past that. If then you were raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ is. Notice that's between two comes. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Now, very important to understand why Jesus is there. Because every time you see the right hand of God, it implies power. The power of God is always mentioned as being in His right hand. The power of God on the right side of the Father. Next verse. Set your mind on things above. Notice, He's directing us to quit looking here and start looking here. Not on things on the earth. For you die. Well, some of you are wounded. <laughs> you better pray. We're going to have fun. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears. Then you also will appear with Him in glory. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. If then, I like how Paul 
Paul starts this chapter. Have you ever noticed how holy people are? Just ask them. <laughs> and you go to talk to them, oh, I love the Lord. Well, brother, I haven't seen you in church a while. Oh, I don't have to go to church to love Jesus. Y'all heard that? Well, I don't know about you, but if uh, Kyle tells Haiti, I love you. My how I love you. And never goes home. We got a problem, Houston. But she's going to gut you if you got. <laughs> if you love somebody, you want to be with them. Amen? If your spouse is by you, look over and say, oh, I want to be with you. Oh, how I want to be with you. I love you so much. Guys, I try. <laughs> if then, you're claiming everything you're saying you are, your profession of faith, all I've heard is how holy you are because you told me. Seek those things which are above. Not on things up there. I was reading in Romans chapter 6, could you? And I'm going to ask you girls to go to scriptures that y'all don't, I'm not ready for. But Romans 6, start at verse 6 for me, if you can do that. I, I would love for them, them to see all these verses. Now, all they got was just if then in Colossians 3. But Romans chapter 6, beginning at verse 6. If you can get me there. If not, I'm just... Oh, there you are. They're awesome, aren't they? Give our media people a <laughs> Now, Paul is talking to the church of Rome. He said, they're knowing them. That our old man was crucified with Him. That the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has freed from sin. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over Him. Now you remember, He went to the bowels of the earth and took back what the enemy stole. He's got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And He said He dies no more. Now if you want me to argue the case for Jesus Christ, I'll be the attorney and be glad to. All the other gods of this world, they're still, they're worm, they're still in the ground. The only God that has ever conquered death is Jesus Christ and He will never die anymore. The defense rest. For the death that He died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, before you go to the next verse, a lot of us are not dead to sin. We fall prey to the things that trips us up continually. Then we're not dead. If we're dead to sin, sin has no dominion over you anymore. It'll tell you here in just a few moments about verse 14 that sin has no more dominion over you. The only reason that sin is still alive in your body is because you allow it to be there. If you are dead in Jesus Christ and have crucified the flesh, then you have power over the sin. Sin has no more power over you. If you say that sin has more power over you than the blood of Jesus Christ, you're trying to tell me that there's no power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you that the blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than anything you'll ever face. Anybody hear me? You gotta hear me now. If you see 
still dying in sin every day, you need to check your status. If then you're in Christ, you need to have dominion over sin and sin not dominion over you. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Look at your name and say, he's talking to you. <laughs> you make the brag, but are we really like Jesus Christ? He is our temple, is he not? Amen. Don't let the time I heard anybody say, now we always go looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, but Paul said, you follow me as I follow Christ. Because we line it up together. It's time the church lines up with the life of Jesus Christ and defeats sin once and for all and say, hey, I'm not going to fall prey to the tricks of the enemy in it. If then we are in Jesus Christ, let's act like we belong to Jesus Christ. Let's live like we belong to Jesus Christ. Then things happen. Now, go back to verse 1. Sister Care of Colossians. He said, seek. I told you about trying to play hide and seek with my four-year-old granddaughter. She hadn't got the concept of this game yet. She said, let's play hide and seek. So I'll go hide and I'll hide. And she's getting frustrated because she can't find me. And finally she'd be hollering, Papa, where are you? I can't disappoint her. So James, I come out of hide. And she said, there you are. Found you. I said, okay, your turn to hide. And I go to counting, and she runs to the pantry every time. <laughs> and I walk through the house and go, Lindley, where are you? And she'll be in the pantry and go, here I am. <laughs> I win every time. But when you seek something, I was reminded of the parable that Jesus gave. The lost sheep. Where that shepherd had a hundred under his care. And he safely put the ninety-nine where he knew they would be. And he went back to find the one that was lost. Amen. And when he found it, he rejoiced mightily and greatly. Because that which was lost was found. He was seeking after it and found it. Amen. There's a woman that had this, the coins and she swept her house because she couldn't account for one of them. And when she found it, she rejoiced greatly. When you seek something, you're going to have some rejoicing that goes along with it. Now, in order to seek, it is defined very simply. To seek is an attempt to find something. It is an attempt or desire to obtain something. And it's also to ask for something. What does the Bible say? Knock, it shall be opened. Ask, it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. He said we are to seek those things where Jesus is at the right hand of God. Now, when I read about Jesus being at the right hand of God, it, it made, it's perfect. It's all through the Scripture. But I was led back to something in my mind over in John chapter 17, verses 7 or 22 through 26. Let me turn back there. It's not fair to thee. And if I beat you, you'll be lunch. She beat me. Oh, you lunch. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. Is that what it says? Uh -huh. That they may be one just as we are one. I and them, you and me, that they may be made perfect and one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory which you have given me 
For you loved me before the foundation of the world. Oh, righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and will declare it that the love with which you love me may be in them and I. In them. What Jesus is saying, we have got a connection together. Father, just like you love me, I love them, you love them, and we become one. If you want to defeat the world, get your life in Jesus Christ. That's where our power is at. Christ is sitting at the right hand making intercession for us. Now I read in scripture in Mark 16, 9 and Acts 7, 55 and 56, Romans 8, 34, Ephesians 1 and 20 and Hebrews 1 and 3 that you will see that Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and for me. When you are troubled and you do not know what to do. And all you can do is cry, Abba, Father. You have a mediator, Jesus Christ. That's standing at the right hand of the power of God. Making intercession for you. Father, I want you to give them and I want you to help them. The reason we're not receiving is because we're not asking. The reason that we do not receive is because we're not seeking. I don't know about you, but I want to go to the cross. And I want to go to my Father. Because that's where my help comes from. Mm, hallelujah. Then he said, Set your mind. God bless you for next Sunday. But you don't want me to tell you about this. Some of you got your mind set. You hard headed and stuck. If I didn't know any better, I think you were all my brothers and sisters. <laughs> Lost in blood's got to be hard headed and stuck. I don't know why my kids are like their mother. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, when you make your mind up, I've seen women. If you don't believe in the resurrection, watch some of these people that sleep at 10 o'clock on Black Friday. <laughs> 2 o'clock, they've got their fighting clothes on. You ain't never seen the light of frustration. And people want the same thing and they're near to get in a fight over. They set their minds that they're going to be there and they're there. I saw something on the news one time. I said, you have got to be kidding me. They were camped out the night before on hard pavement so they could be in line first. Haven't they heard of Google? You've not visited, have visited Amazon yet, have you? They'll deliver it to your door. And you won't limp back from shopping. But when you set your mind on something, you're not easily swayed because your mind is made up. And if you would face the devil and tell him straight up, I've got my mind made up, I'm going to heaven, I guarantee you, you're not an easy target anymore. You are somebody that is determined to get to where Jesus is at. you got to set your mind. All right, you cowboys, wake up in here. When you get ready to fence, <coughs> you set the corner post. You make sure it is anchored. Why? Because you're going to pull against it. You're going to put a strain on it. And that thing has got to be set so it does not give and you mess it all up. Amen. You're going to put a bind on it. But I'm here to tell you today I don't care what the devil brings against you. I don't care how much 
he pulls. I don't care how much he stretches. I don't care what he brings against you. If you're anchored and got your mind set on God, and you be like David, I shall not be moved. I guarantee you, you can face anything, and the devil will not have any dominion over you anymore. Somebody points you to this house. Straight to my mind. I want the blue one. Uh, but the red's prettier. I want the blue one. But green is so much more vibrant. I want the blue one! Right. You see me. You understand. When that mind is made up and set on something, they're not going to settle for anything else. When you get your mind set on heaven, you're not going to be satisfied until you get there. Set your mind on things above. That's where our help comes from. David echoes, he said, I look to the hills which cometh my strength. I'm limited in what I can do, but I serve a limitless God. So I seek what's above every situation in my life. I seek above every frustration that is in my life because I've got my mind set on things above. Not on things of the earth. Now, anybody perceive anything? Amen. If not, come over to my house. We'll finish this thing. Now, not on things of this earth. Why do we act like this is it? Pastor, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to heaven. I don't know about you. Pastor, I don't know. Paul said, I'm caught between two things. Going on to be with God or be here to be with you. I want to tell you, he said, whether I live or whether I die, I belong to God. Amen. Makes no difference. I win either way. you got to make up your mind and I win either way. If I get to escape this frustration, that means I'm quicker up there to where he's at. Now, I heard a little boy that were preaching about the rapture so hard in an old Pentecost church. Oh, I mean, they were getting after it that Jesus was coming back right now. They were having testimony. And that little boy, Brother James, stood up and he said, If he's coming tonight and he's going to get alone, I'll wait and catch the next bus. <laughs> he wasn't ready to go. We got a lot of adults that you've got your mind on more earthly things than you do godly things. And you wonder why you stay frustrated and in a wreck. It's because you're looking around you for all the answers and all the hope. And I've got news for you. They're not down here. Why don't you just set your eyes a little bit higher than that and keep on looking up and you'll see somebody at the right hand of God say, hey, David is calling me again, Father. And David needs you to show up today. And all of a sudden, David receives his answer. Why? Because we got our on Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Philippians 3 and 20 says, our citizenship is in heaven. I don't belong here. I'm just a pilgrim and a stranger walking through. My treasure, my hope, is all beyond the blue. One of these days, I'm just going to leave and I'm just going to start walking. And I'm going to leave this place. My citizenship is in heaven. Why? I have met all the requirements that this manual said. I've accepted Him as the Lord and Savior of my life. I've had my life cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And therefore now, my citizenship is in heaven. Amen. Anybody hear me? Hallelujah. Y'all stay with me a little longer. I got a couple more verses. Matthew 6, 19 and 20. Would you put this one up? Come out not on earth things. Nah, there's some beautiful things in the earth. I'll never forget standing on Grizzly Peak, which I'll never stand on again because I will never climb that thing again. Ever. Linda, ever. 
That's the first time Macho Mike really got embarrassed. I thought I was in shape. I, boy, I, I was climbing that mountain and I still on my hands and knees. Air thin. I'm trying to get to the top. And here comes Sister Linda walking by me and said, Brother well, Mike, it's kind of flat. You can get up now. <laughs> I'll never forget this, folks. I left. Thank you, Linda. I, I jumped up like nobody else saw me. And I get up on the top of Grizzly Peak. And I look down. There's clouds blowing. And I look at Taylor Reservoir and the Taylor River. It looked like God took His time and took a paintbrush and did the perfect portrait of you. I have seen things that is so pretty, it's unbelievable. I've seen crystal clear water. It's not like the Trinity River ever way. <laughs> I've seen some beautiful things. But they don't have my attention. My attention is a little bit higher. Amen. You can't even fathom. Now, I heard this priest that neither has it in them to the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them. I've heard preachers get up and say, you can't even have a clue how awesome heaven is and all that. But the next verse says, but we know. I believe I've got the prettiest mansion that you have never seen anything like it. Why? Because the builder was Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe your mansion is just as beautiful. I believe that when we walk down the streets of gold, you're not going to believe what we see. If He gives us the desires of our heart, just imagine the things that God has prepared for those come that love Him. You hear me? That love Him. Now, we are instructed about the earth. They said, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth. Nothing wrong with having something. If you work for it, you deserve it. You hear me? You don't have to be broke, poor, and hungry, and frustrated all the time to serve God. As long as you keep things in perspective. I've got some things that I love. I love old Bob. That old horse has been the best friend I've had over years. But let me tell you what. I don't love him. I don't think Bob's going to heaven. Why? Because he's not white. He's a soul. <laughs> but all the things that we have cannot compare to what God has for us. Do not lay up yourself treasure where where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. I've told you this before, but I, I find it hilarious every time I think about it. That the, the man had married this woman and, and he's dying. Dying. On his deathbed, he said, Promise me you'll put all my money in the castle. She said, We'll do. I'll make sure all your fortunes in that coffin. Her friend walks up to the coffin with her and they're there and she takes a piece of paper and Brother Nick lays it in that coffin. She said, What is that? She said, That's all his riches. I wrote him a check, and if that sucker can cash it, he can have it. <laughs> I want to tell you something. It's not important of all the things we have down here. Because there's people around the world that have nothing. And they're dying for Christ every day. In Africa. Places like, you know, and we take for granted the blessing. We are living in the greatest country in the world. Whether you want to realize it or not. Praying it never changes. Amen. But he said, don't lay up these kind of treasures because things do break in and steal. Go ahead. Next verse. Have we got it? That is it. But lay up your safe treasure in heaven where it neither moth nor rust nor straws or where things do not break in and steal. We need to have all our treasures in heaven. The way you do that is have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Verse 3. said, for you died. Y'all got 20 more minutes? Amen. Good, I need more than that. <laughs> for you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. If we died, why does the old man frequently show up? 
Boy, it's quiet. Amen. Brother Lofton, I don't know where that come from, you blind rascal. Yeah. I don't know where those words come out. They come from inside of you. If you die, your life is hidden in Christ. We've got too many wounded people and not enough dead folk. What are you talking about? Spiritually. If you're dead and you die to that old man and the desires and everything with that old man, then you're not constantly fighting him. But we're constantly fighting the old man, so we need to make sure he's put to death and is alive in Christ. Anybody hear me? Hold on. Galatians 2.20. Can you get that before me, Sister Karen? Galatians 2.20. And then 5.24. If you have it. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Now look at chapter 5. Verse 24. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with His passions and His own. Now, what is it saying? For you who die. <coughs> look at 2 Corinthians 5 9. Real quick, 2 Corinthians 5 9. I want you to get these verses. Write these down. <coughs> Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to Him. We need to start being concerned about being pleasing to Jesus Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not yourself, but to Him. We need to make that our aim, that we're going to be pleasing to Him. He said, and if your life is hidden with Christ, in God. Now, hidden simply is defined like this. Kept out of sight or concealed. You know what? You're hidden from the enemy. Why? Because you're behind a veil. The veil of the blood. Amen. And you are concealed and hid behind Christ. And He comes and accuses you of all things. The Bible said that the accuser goes before the Lord night and day trying to beg a case against you. But he said, oh, they're hidden. I don't know what you're understanding. What you're saying is because they're behind the veil. The veil of the blood of Jesus Christ. My sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, never to be remembered no more. I'm concealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You might have a case against me, you think. The devil might say a lot of things against me. But Jesus is saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Why? They've been washed away. Chapter 30, verse 3, a prophetic word 
what would happen in the future. In 1 John 3 and 2. Then you also will appear with him in glory. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let, let, me, let me read some of these. I hope you have time. He said, For this we say to you in verse 15 of chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians. For we say, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Could you imagine being at a cemetery when the rapture came to place? I wonder how they're going to explain the rapture. They lie so much on the news now. <laughs> Aliens abduct millions. <laughs> Often said I'd like to be in Houston traffic, blowing the horn and waving and get <laughs> Don't you know there'd be a wreck? I don't care where I'm at. I don't care what place it might be. I just want to go when Jesus comes. Amen? Now, let's, let's keep reading here. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord air and thus we shall always be with the Lord. The rapture is real. And it's going to happen. Look at Revelations 5, 9, and 10. This takes place after the rapture. Now, in chapter 4 of Revelation, verse 1, said, John heard a voice out of heaven said, Come up hither, and the door was opened up to heaven, and he transcended up to heaven. And it says this, Revelation. Look at Revelation 5, 9, and 10. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. How many of you are redeemed? Come on, how many of you are redeemed? And this is where you find yourself. He has redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. So right now, if you're watching, I want to make this statement. All lives matter to God. It is not a race. It is nothing else. But you are created in God. You have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. I'm here to tell somebody Jesus is coming back. We're coming with you. Look at Revelation 19, 11 through 16. And I'll close with it. It's unfair to them, but I'm telling you, you need this, you need to mark these scriptures. Revelation. I'll turn over. You got your Bibles? Turn over there. With me to chapter 19. Of Revelation. I'm flipping. Bear with me. You need these scriptures. 11 through 16. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Hmm. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe that was dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. John chapter 1 verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And his name is called Jesus. 
And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen with 6.5 creed mortars. I'm just seeing if you're paying attention. They were white and clean. Followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a short sword that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with the rod of iron. Rod of iron. He himself, it sounded like my mother. God forgive me. <laughs> he himself threads a wine press of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he was on, <laughs> and he has on his robe, on his thigh, a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm here to tell you that when you look up to the heavens, we need to keep concentrating up here because this thing is wrapping up. Brother allow any day now Jesus can come back and you'll find yourself in heaven. So I'm going to leave you with a question. If then, if then, you claim all that you are, then live. Be like Christ. If then you're going to go under the banner, then walk under the banner worthy. If then you're going to be all that, then be all that for Jesus Christ. Anybody hear me today? Yes. Amen. Stand with me if you would. We're going to pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you today for the promises of your word. I thank you for every scripture that is written and is there for our admonishment and correction and way of living. But today I ask you to touch every man, woman, boy, and girl in this place. That we're, if we're going to go under the banner and we're going to claim, then we need to start acting like it and living like it. Do not let sin attack them because they're behind and concealed behind the blood. God, let them have dominion over sin because sin has no dominion over them. And I want you to bless them as they seek above that you train them to not look at the situation, God, but look at the situation fixer. You. Train us to keep our eyes above all the things that's going around and let us keep focused on You. Let our mind be set that we're going to go to heaven. God, let us not deviate from the path that You've instructed us to walk. Now bless my brother and my sisters and all these children that are here today that God, You give us the strength to be pleasing to You and to be what You want us to be. And we all said so be it in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. May God bless you the next Sunday.